The Konarik mask is somewhat gimmicky. Though it's called the Ultra Dragon Priest mask in the creation kit, I'd wager many of you haven't collected the Dragon Priest masks to get Konarik because you didn't feel it was worth it. But I'm going to teach you how to get Konarik early, use it to level your restoration skill quickly, and summon a permanent Dragon Priest. To obtain the mask early, you need the Shadowfoot Sanctum creation, a one-handed weapon, some Cork Bull Brute, and 7500 gold to buy Shadowfoot Sanctum. Upon entering the Sanctum, find the False Wardrobe to enter the Armory. What we are interested in lies behind this southeast wall. Equip your one-handed weapon in the offhand, stand against the corner of the wall in the weapon racks, and execute an offhand power attack to phase through the wall. Then open your inventory and eat a cork bowl brew. This will paralyze you, and with some luck, you'll be on the other side when you stand up. And on this small platform is our prize, the test items urn, which was brought to my attention by Krabby Pancake 94 it's a trove filled with Thieves Guild quest items, collectibles, dragon claws, and all the Dragon Priest masks except for Mirak. So pick up Konarik and whatever else you want. In order to trigger Konarik's effects, you have to be hit by an attack while already under 15% health. When hit, there's a 15% chance to cast Grand Healing, a unique 12 second flame cloak, and an invisible explosion that staggers everyone in about 14.5 meters. There's also a separate 3% chance to cast the Conjure Dragon Priest spell. First, let's focus on the Grand Healing spell. Grand Healing normally can't be obtained until your character is level 35 or your restoration is 65, and it has a charge time of half a second. But the Mask has no level requirement and can cast it instantly. The Johansson posited that if we could trigger the Mask rapidly, we'd be able to level restoration very quickly. There's just one problem. Grand Healing will restore 200 health each time, and that means we'll be out of the 15% health range after just one or two casts. So for this to work, we need to disable our natural health regeneration and get millions of health. I'll be using the Necromancer Amulet to disable health regen. Once you have it, drop it in front of a city gate and order a follower to pick it up. Then exit and return through the gate, and there's a chance that an extra one will have spawned on the ground. Keep trying until you get a second amulet. Next, we'll need to get a few million health, and also a powerful alchemy buff. Start by becoming either a werewolf or vampire lord. Then get three of the same type of unenchanted ring. Enchant one of them with fortify health, and another with fortify alchemy. Be sure to rename both of them so they have different names. You'll also need a fortify restoration potion with its strength in the millions. If you don't know how to get this, see my guide to the new and improved restoration loop in the description. Now take your follower to a remote location, equip your transformation power, quick save, then talk to them at the same time you transform. If done correctly, you should have the dialogue window open while you're transforming. Otherwise, reload your quick save and try again. Once you're fully transformed, trade with your follower. Give your follower the two necromancer amulets, then equip them each directly from your follower's inventory. This allows you to wear them both at the same time to disable your health regen. Now drink a Super Restoration Potion and equip your Unenchanted Ring. Then when you try to equip the Fortify Health Ring, the Dummy Ring will stay equipped, but the Fortify Health Enchantment will still be applied to you. And since the Fortify Health Enchantment is affected by the Restoration Potion, you'll gain millions of health each time you try to equip it. Keep equipping it until you have about 50 million health. You can also apply the Fortify Alchemy Enchantment alongside Fortify Health. I recommend equipping the alchemy ring 50 to 100 times to get a very powerful fortify alchemy buff, because the next step is to make a fortify conjuration potion. The conjure dragon priest spell is correctly affected by conjuration buffs, so this potion will greatly increase the summon duration. Anyway, since our health is so high, we'll need a special source of damage to get below 15%. I used the Sallow Regent Black Book from White Ridge Barrow, since the darkness inside damages your health by a percentage. I know that was a pretty lengthy setup, but it was worth it, because now all we have to do is go into Raldbathar and stand inside this fire trap near the entrance. There are two streams of fire that each hit us about six times per second, triggering Konarik faster than its scripts can keep up with. So now we just sit here and witness greatness for about five minutes while Konarik levels up your restoration with grand healing. Be sure you don't level up your character while doing this, otherwise you'll have to damage your health again. Once we're done obsoleting Colette, we can wait an hour to kill any Dragon Priest that may have spawned. Then drink your Fortify Conjuration Potion and go back into the flames to conjure another Dragon Priest. 
If your potion is strong enough, the spell should last about a real life year. The priest has no natural health regen, but you can still heal it with necromantic healing or heal undead. You could even get two permanent dragon priests using the Twin Souls Conjuration perk. Once you have your desired priests, you should take off the Conoric Mask. Any new Dragon Priest summons will replace your current ones that have the Conjuration buff applied. You can also remove the Necromancer amulets and Super Stacked Ring if you'd like. Just be sure to level up beforehand so removing the health enchantment doesn't prove fatal. So whether you wanted to level Restoration quickly or play as a Necromantic Cleric, I hope you learned something useful. And if you're looking for a way to use some of those other Dragon Priest masks in the test items urn, check out this Dagoth Ur build video that shows how to combine them to make Elemental Blast very powerful. That's all for now, thanks for watching.